first on the agenda is to approve the agenda. Is it good to approve as written, or do we need to make any modifications? We need to make a modification. So at the end, we should uh, we got to sign the well. We're going to sign the town manager contract. So you've all read it and gave back your feedback, and I made the adjustments. I don't think that needs to be done in executive session. It's just a motion and a signature. Okay. So we'll put that. You can put it last. What? We'll Under do. the amendment of the traffic ordinance. <clears throat> okay. I don't care. And if there happens to need to be a discussion, then obviously we'd have to enter an executive session or something. But sure. But for now, we can see if we do yeah. a public session. Okay. I don't care. I don't care. So town manager what contract. What was that? Kristen's contract. That was not the last one, so. There's two that you know, there's three of them there. Last, you very last tab. You and Dave didn't sign. I missed one? Yeah, we had three on the back of the book. Mm. Oh, there's like two tags. And it's all no, there's three. three. Well, someone slipped one in when I left my possession. Uh, really <laughs> I saw all three. No, I wasn't at the, I wasn't at the <laughs> So you put the third one in. Because <laughs> you're still hallucinating. You, right, so Chris wasn't there, so. Yeah, I wasn't were you there? there you weren't there, no. And Jordan wasn't there. I signed it. Is that a list? <laughs> Is you have a list? No, no list today. Okay, so I was like, he's prepared. So we're adding the town manager's oh, contract to the end of the. Under the amendment of Town Bethel's traffic ordinance. Oh, that's a special yep. catering thing. Okay. Was there anything else? I was there. That's all I got. Chris wasn't there. Yeah. <laughs> We make a mo motion to approve the agenda as written with the one uh, amendment. Yep. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. And we have <clears throat> one appointment this evening, the Human Services Advisory Board. Paul, you representing them? or? Yes. So I have to take off that hat and put on that other hat. So, um, Human Service Advisory Board, we, um, as you know, we had one uh, member retire, but we were able to con two other members <laughs> into coming aboard, Suzanne Burgos and uh, Bennett Law. They both have been great additions to the group. Uh, Suzanne was on the committee years ago, and Bennett uh, brings a whole, you know, why are we doing this, you know, questioning our procedures and everything, so it's been a real good group to work with. Um, so going back a little bit of history, late 70s, um, at town meeting, there were only four organizations that routinely asked for money. <clears throat> they were like the, um, the ambulance, um, the senior center in, in uh, Royalton, and the uh, visiting nurses, and there was a fourth one that I, I don't recall what it was. But they were done as separate articles. And in 8081, the select board decided to group them together, have a committee vet the applications, and then move them through as one article at town meeting <coughs> instead of all separate articles. So that's kind of where it started. And it's grown over the years. Obviously, the, the money has, has increased. The need has increased. There have been a lot more nonprofits that have applied uh, for um, <clears throat> assistance. So this year, I, after last year's town meeting, I heard a lot of conversations at town meeting about how the town um, gives appropriations to various nonprofit organizations. You know, we have the human services part, then we had some additional organizations that uh, requested funds. Um, either through the petition process or through meeting with the, the select board directly. So it, I thought it was a good time to just kind of look at the whole thing and examine it from front to back and make sure that we were hitting all of the right things, that our process was easy for people to deal with, and that we were, you know, we were touching all the bases. So we basically looked at the entire process from stem to stern, and we made some changes that we hope will streamline the process a little bit. And we've got some recommendations that we wanted to pass along to the board for their consideration and guidance, because in the end, the select board this, you know, decides what's on the warning and how it gets there and, and those types of things. So um, 
We, first thing that we did was we looked at the, the process, and the process used to be that we would send out these letters, you know, at least two letters, if not more, and we would ch actually chase people that routinely uh, applied that didn't send in their application for whatever reason, and we'd go chasing them, and Kelly would spend hours doing all sorts of phone calls and emails and that, so we decided, we said, we've got to stop that. We're going to send out one letter, and it's going to have everything that you need to know and the date that you need to have it by, and, and that was going to be it. And we were, we were just going to try to, you know, instead of chasing people for, <laughs> to give them money, which, which sounds strange, but it actually happens, um, we were going to do that. So we have a new copy of the letter, the revised letter in your packet um, that you can see. We changed around some of the grammar and the wording, but we also asked that the organization give us documentation as far as their nonprofit status because that was a kind of a, came up as a question a couple of times over the years. Um, so you've got a copy of that letter in there, and Kelly has sent that letter uh, out to the, you know, the regular groups that apply. Uh, and we've gotten, you know, we've gotten some back already, and, and they seem to be following the instructions um, okay. So the next thing that we talked about was looking at last year's list, we really never had any guidance as far as how much money was in the budget to do this human services side of it. Uh, in the past, Scott had related that you know, the, the select board would give some <coughs> guidance uh, as to a dollar figure um, that, that we could use. And, and over the years, it's kind of gotten out of that hand and, and it's always been, I know as long as I've been involved in it, We've always had like a 2%, 3%. We've tried to correspond to the budget, you know, targets that we have. Um, so what we'd like to do is make an adjust, a couple of adjustments in the, in the uh, organization part of it. We'd like to see that the uh, Tri-Valley Transit has become, you know, an important part of the, of the town and the, 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 uh, the county as far as trans, uh, transporting people around to doctor's appointments and all sorts of stuff. They've grown tremendously. Their request for funding has grown tremendously too. So we, we're thinking of them more like a warva now, like a, like a uh, White River <coughs> ambulance service. <coughs> so, excuse me. So we'd like to see them removed from the human services list and kept as a separate warning item similar to the White River Valley um, ambulance. Um, the other change that we talked about was having, uh, in <coughs> last year, <coughs> last year was a little different. We had, we had quite a few additional folks apply for uh, funding other than what's on the human services. They came in as separate articles, uh, for example, the food shelf, the uh, South Royalton um, Senior Center, the Playhouse, um, and what we'd like to see is that if somebody comes in with a large amount of money, um, that they just go, we, we will direct them to the statute that requires them to petition through signatures and whatnot to, to go onto the article, petition the select board with signatures, et cetera, to be able to place as an article on the warning. Um, last year, we kind of make it, made a little exception with the food shelf. We, we put them on both places, um, human services and the other side, too. And we thought that was kind of a conflict. It, it really should be either or. Uh, it really shouldn't be split up like that. So that's a suggestion that we have um, also. <clears throat> the, any large amounts, like over the five, six, seven thousand dollar range, we would, if you look at the letter, we're directing them towards the statute that requires um, petitions and signatures, <clears throat> excuse me, and whatnot. It is the ability of the select board to change that, and not require the petition part. You can come in and talk and, and talk to the select board, and if they decide that we don't need to go the petition route, then so be it. Um, that's, that's the authority of the select board to do that. Yep. One of the earlier committees, 
And when, uh, when these, to get on the committee, the select board usually let it go through, voted on the floor, and if passed on the floor, then they put it into the, so we never saw anything that hadn't been passed by the voters um, in, our, in our list. And um, they also gave us kind of a ballpark of numbers saying, look, our, we don't want to increase this more than 3%, 1%, whatever. Try to keep it into that, into that area. So we got guidance from, from the, the um, select board before we got these, got these things. And over time, um, it's kind of evolved as kind of a throwing, throwing things in there. And he's, he, I, I think when we get requests for more than, than we even gave out in the year before, it's a little, a little, we need some guidance. You want us to give away more than, you know. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think the guidance needs to come from the select board first instead of coming for us and sending it back to you. I think anything that should, that goes to us should be sent from the select board and with some sort of guidance. Yeah. So when you say that you, in the past, everything had gone to the voters first before you saw it, well, what are you saying? That everybody petitioned and then once their petition yes. came in with signatures, then it went to the human services? Yes. And did you make everybody petition year after year after year? Or did no, you say- No, after they, after it was voted- They only had to petition once. It, yes, once, ah, they, okay. once they petitioned, and and the voters agreed to it. Yep. Um, they still had to apply. Yep. And then we got paperwork from them mm -hmm. to make a reasonable decision, and, mm -hmm. and things like how many Bethel people were involved. I mean, um, there was a whole bunch of different ones that we used to have that there was no no people being involved just because we were in, we're in Windsor County. Right. Um, another one, I, I. Uh, had an issue with is is the Association of the Blind. That kind of got passed around a little bit, basically because everybody, Norm Case wanted it and, and pan, Pandemic, I don't know if you guys go back to Pandemic, but um, that was both of their, their babies. Um, and that's all well and good and I don't have a problem giving it to it, but they asked Bethel for money, but they don't ask Randolph or any of these other other towns and mm -hmm. and um, so anyway, I'm, I'm not trying to make this more confusing. No, no, I was I, just curious. I, think I just want having, to make sure I having the steps instead of taking the thirty thousand, that select board should have dealt with that before it was sent to us. Because yeah. once they petition, if if they petition for an amount, um, that's going on the warning period. The end. You can't negotiate with them after the fact. Well, it's better it, to negotiate up front. Well, you know, it also came up as a question as how does somebody get on the list? Um, you know, specifically Bennett was, was curious about the, you know, the playhouse. Um, how do you get on the list? You, you know, you're going to require them to petition every year mm -hmm. or do it once and get on the list? He said that's the way it works in Braintree, Randolph, mm -hmm. the other towns that they uh, ask uh, for money. Mm -hmm. So if you look at the, the list from this year, if we removed the um, Tri-Valley and we removed the um, food shelf allocation, the total came in right around a penny. Perfect. Um, of, based on the tax rate, you know, the current tax rate from this year, it came in right around one cent. Is this what the food shelf's looking for this year? No, that's last year's. That's out of last year's town report. Proposed. Yeah, requested. that's last year's uh, information. It's not this year's. Um, so, you know, I don't know if there's a target that we can establish or if the 2 or 3% growth is, is acceptable um, or, you know, just to get some kind of guidance uh, about the do total dollar amount that we, we should be dealing with. And if I remember <clears throat> correctly, the library did the same thing. They had a small yep. request with everything and then a bigger one. And I believe Bennett did the same thing. There was so much for the playhouse. Yeah, he went from 1,000 to 3,000. Yeah, because he had to petition. Mm -hmm. um, and then Eric uh, Richardson did the same thing with the 
senior center. Yeah, because was, once they did their financials, they realized that they were yeah short. Yeah, they had already been approved by Human yeah. Services for the four thousand that they usually yeah. went for, and then they said, "Whoops, wait a minute, yeah. uh, we need to go more." Yeah. And I don't believe they had to do the petition route. Um, they did for they the did they? Yep. Did they? they okay. Did. Okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. So I can. So well, we're thinking it should be like either or, um, yeah. you know. Um, I have seen other towns where they say, Paul, where they say, all right, you're going to petition for three years. Once you petition for three years for the same amount of money, we'll automatically put you on. Mm -hmm. The minute you want more money, you petition again for three years. So it's a cycle. So they mm -hmm. prove that they have voter support for three years in a row. Then after that, you leave the amount the same, you stay on. But yep. the minute you change it, you petition again for three years. Yep. Kind of that, because it takes some time to get signatures and then you yep. know that they have support. I mean, that's just an example yep. of, yep. of how, an, how other yep. in other towns are. Right. So those are, the, those are the highlights of where we're at this point. Uh, we will be meeting in the beginning of December <clears throat> like we usually do and reviewing the applications that come in. Um, so all that part of, I mean, we felt that part of the system was in good, you know, good working order. All right, and what I'm hearing is you want some guidance. Now, what I think we need to give you guidance on is a maximum amount of requests to stay on this list. When you go over that, you need to petition, period, period. That one which would now take the library, they can't get 5,000 and then 22,000. They've got, if they want 27, they got a petition. Well, I think they're going to come to you. They've already asked to come to you, and and you could negotiate a deal with them. Well, I don't I'm think just we, I don't think we want to. I think we okay. want to have it. We want to have it set so that it's no. <clears throat> it's the way it is. Okay. If you want more than well, X, you need a petition. Okay. You we need to have also. Um, how much money do we have to give away? I don't, I mean, we're talk, We're all over the place here. I mean, we're looking, if you take that out, we're looking at 22000 which is $4,000 less than it was in 23. Mm -hmm. Is that the number we're going to work with and then put a percentage on it per? But here's, these are questions that I think we need to answer. Yeah, yeah I think that's, that's, that's what, what we're asking. That's what they want. Yeah, those are the, that's exactly what they want you to answer. But I, I'm, I'm very strongly saying you, you're not on the. You're not on this, and petition for more. You want more than the maximum we give away in human services. Mm -hmm. You petition for all of it. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's what we were saying. That's what yeah. we were saying. Yeah, that's what, it yeah. Like. that's what we said. Did you guys? Did you guys talk at all about the option of complete dissolving it? And no. The reason why I said that is that I've been not saying you know what I'm going for, but. Just kind of doing some research out there. It seems like towns typically do like one of three things. They either have some sort of budget that they do like we have done, um, and you present that under an article. Or towns, usually these are larger towns, they end up everything as a petition. So you'll have like six pages of petition, 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 yes. petition yes. that you vote on. <clears throat> or other towns that do nothing and and perceivably give that money back to the voters themselves yep. to appropriate that money however they would like to do it. Meaning, the you know, if it's, give who they want. you know, if yep. a, uh, make it up, if it's two pennies worth of stuff and that's, you know, $100 a year, then, you know, you could donate your $100 a year to, you know, if you Person. really use Tri-Valley Transit, you donate to, you know, or whatever it is. I see. And, okay. um, so those seem to be like the, the three options mm -hmm. that the towns do um, from what I was seeing. Not saying that one one's better than the other one, but I just wondered well, if you guys a, had that was a comment that. that came up at town meeting last year. You know, um, do, how, how is there a conflict saying okay, you need to support X Y Z agency through your taxes, and you might say, well, maybe I don't want to. Maybe I, maybe I want to donate to them as an independent person. And some uh, people as, maybe as donate, want to donate to their church. Maybe they yeah, give 10% you know, of their whatever. income to church. Money's, they don't also want to donate to their Money's tight. Taxes. So yeah. I know, see. Um, that, that was something that, you know, that yeah. I heard at meeting also. The, the other thing I was looking at, um, so the, the um, statute that mm -hmm. was in there, 
Mm -hmm. I started reading through the statute and then kind of looking through what some past organizations we've given money to mm -hmm. doesn't necessarily line up with this statute. Did mm -hmm. you guys see that? Or well, I just put the statute in the packet. You know, like there's... Oh, yeah, I don't know about that, where that came from. That wasn't something, that wasn't part <laughs> no, of my... No, it was uh, me. I yeah. put the statute yeah. in there. Yeah. Yeah, that but if you look at the way. statute and, you know, there are some things that yeah. we have given money to in the past that wouldn't necessarily follow in with that statute, yeah. like the playhouse, for instance, would not follow under this. Mm -hmm. No, um, I agree. So I... Can I give a little bit of history? One of the reasons so you started this, this thing was, was a couple things. It was a lot of work for the select board to chase all, all these things, and nobody knew, so it's when people came in and asked for money, the select board didn't, they were kind of blindsided, and, and um, so they wanted to do, have somebody look at this stuff and see what, what we were actually getting. The other big reason was it took up an immense amount of time at town meeting when these people come in one after another and everybody has to speak for and against. It's taking a whole lot of time. And a lot of these things that were passing probably wouldn't have passed, wouldn't have, wouldn't have passed if everybody voted, but you have a small, a relatively small group of people at town meeting making these decisions. And so that was one of the reasons that they put some of it aside so somebody's actually looking and making sure what people came and said at the meeting was actually true and how much <coughs> was actually affecting Bethel voters as opposed to to you know, taking the word for these these people and how you know with these sab stories and all this stuff. Not that, I, not that, I have a problem with that. But you have a we only have so much money. Right. You could ask the voters either at town meeting as a question whether or not in the future they want to do this because the statute is clear. It says you may. It doesn't say have to um, mm -hmm. or shall. So you could mm -hmm. ask the voters. You could do a survey. Um, mm -hmm. to find out if, you know, maybe this year you move forward with your process, but it's something you could get feedback from, mm -hmm. from the voters, um, or, excuse me, voters, residents, um, and, uh, you know, as part of town report or something, just mm -hmm. for information down the mm -hmm. road. Not necessarily, that's not going to affect <clears throat> your process for this coming town meeting, but yeah. if and you then, want to ask a question, like the, you could. The nine mm -hmm. years I've been mm -hmm. on the board, it, you know, it, that was the norm was, you know, came on and whatever that budget was at that time, make it up. If it was twenty-two thousand dollars, then the next year mm -hmm. it would be like you know, what Scott was saying was, you know, the directive would be okay. Our, our ballpark is trying to grow by two percent, and then you mm -hmm. know, yeah. um, and I think what you know we've always kind of been able to navigate that with mm -hmm. the ass and what we'll give to people. Maybe mm -hmm. we might be off by a little bit, but it just seems like the last year or two, the ass have grown exponentially mm -hmm. and and I don't know if the tax base can keep up with the ask you know what I mean mm -hmm. yeah. um, it's, yeah. it's growing quickly so it's yeah. I think it's a, a great opportunity to kind of just examine the whole process and yeah. you know uh, just because things have changed so mm -hmm. so yeah. much there you know there's also something else to think about that I was talking to um, one of the um, Nemerk, you know, doing the townwide reappraisal. So when our townwide reappraisal numbers come in, and the first tax bill that goes out based on the new value is, um, you know, July of 2025, when people get their tax bill, any prebate that they're entitled to is going to be based on their taxes for last year, but also the value of their home. So that first tax bill could hurt some folks. It's something to keep in mind when you're doing budgets because. If they, I'm gonna make this up, say their tax bill is normally $5,000 and they normally get a $2,500 prebate, because this tax bill is now gonna be based on the higher value, their prebate is only as based on the prior year value. And so, Thanks, so right. it's so for going, one year. Yeah, yeah so for one like year, it's gonna be difficult. So definitely, I mean, we always talk about keeping a handle on spending, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. that is gonna be a really particular um, issue to think about that people are already tight 
Um, and then if they're thinking, oh, you know, I'm going to get a bigger prebate, mm -mm, not that year you're not. And, and that could be really difficult for some folks. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely something to, mm -hmm. to, you know, to keep in mind. Paul, I thought I heard you say something about this letter having a, already having a number that if you exceed that number, you're going to go to petition. No, we didn't, we didn't, no, we didn't put that in the letter. What we do is when Kelly gets a request, um, we've given her a guideline, you know, in five, six thousand dollar kind of range. And if it comes in at that range, she'll let me know immediately, but we will push them into the statute. You know, the statute's in the letter and we'll, we'll send them a letter like we did last year with a couple of groups, send them a letter that your request exceeds the, the, um, the funding authorization <clears throat> of, the, of the Human Services Advisory Board. You need to uh, check with the town clerk, to, and here's the statute that you need to follow as far as going the petition route. Would it be easier just to have that number in that letter? It kind of depends. Okay. Well, you then they know, might just ask, well, now you know, it's out there, but now, you know. Well, if we ask for five or six, we'll just make it if... We didn't want to put a number in there because if somebody normally, if we say, okay, the, if you exceed $5,000, you need to go to here. Okay, so now the organization that only asks for 1,000 can okay. say, hmm, yeah. well, oh, I we, see. Can, we <laughs> could bump that up a little bit. Um, <laughs> Good thinking. Uh, you know, the budget is at 22,000 okay. plus 2%. Well, then we'd have to say, well, okay, you now you usually get 1,000, now you're asking for four, mm. so, but we're looking at our numbers and yeah. we're only gonna give you two. You know, you know that's what we do as a group when we vet yeah. the process. When we gre that's when we vet good the. Thinking. Does the money for visiting nurses is that just help people afford visiting nurses, or do they provide the service for free for those that can't afford it? I don't know how that. I don't know how that process. <clears throat> I was just wondering where the money for that. If I don't it know. just. We've we all asked for that that are in in the. In, yeah. in, in, in the group, I don't yeah. think it goes to a specific. Right. I just. Does I don't it think it goes to a specific people just, that need visiting nurses. But we. But what I used to, or we used to do, was look at. They would send us a report, the number of people that are being served mm -hmm. in the town. You could look and see whether whether that was up, down, um, and kind of gauge the need and. If they are asking for more, usually we, if they ask for the same thing, we would, we would um, just give it to them. Um, but if they raised it, then they, and we had any questions, of how come you went up 50 percent? We'd get back to them or try to get more information. That's one of the reasons that we need the information ahead of on time, so that if we have a question to clarify why, yeah. what the reasoning is behind this. Yeah. Um, Windsor County Partners was a was a thing where um, safe lines another one that that you know if there's nobody in Bethel using it why but of course a lot of their stuff is confidential and and but there were actually at one point we had somebody on the board who actually ha had kids had uh, um, people that they housed with from um, <clears throat> abuse so sometimes we can ask questions that and learn more about these yeah, things. Yeah, I'd be curious to know if, if the money, because I'm just wondering if the people that use visiting nurse, are they paying for visiting nurse and this assists them to not pay so much? Or are they getting a free service if they can't afford it because I'm, we're paying them? I'm pretty sure, Jordan, it kind of works similar to like Tri-Valley Transit where the Visiting Nurse Association has a, a budget, an annual budget probably based upon what the previous year is or something like that. And there are certain pieces of the pie of, of their funding mechanisms. So like, if you look at Tri-Valley Transit, when the gentleman usually comes is, you know, they'll show that a, you know, a pretty large piece gets, gets either state or federally funded. And then there's another piece that has a, another different funding mm -hmm. source. And then usually they show like a small piece, which is like the, what they call the yeah. town, yeah, they uh, expect town it. input mm -hmm. on it, and I think I, I'm willing to say that the um, that the visiting nurses and other ones like that, they they're working from their overall budget. They you know they probably get grant money and things like that. They get insurance, mm -hmm. 
you know, take money um, from people, mm -hmm. and then there's probably a piece that is like, now we don't know if all those people are in Bethel or another town. So I do probably a piece well, there. Well, that we do, the cost we do of the people yeah. using visiting. We get there. Yeah. Right. Right. No, but what I'm saying is, you don't know like. We get their financials. So they tell, they show us where their income comes in mm -hmm. from and yeah. what their and what their outgoing money is. Yeah. And we specifically ask how many people in Bethel did you service last year? Uh, yeah, I'm not pro or you know I'm not against it. I was just wondering no. what it. Goes no, and it came up to. like two years ago. Visiting nurses has, in some senses, merged with Dartmouth um, Hospital. Mm -hmm. um, and, and there was a question that came up from one of our residents that said, they're no longer visiting nurses, they're Dartmouth. So our money, is our money going to Dartmouth? And then That'd trickling down to VNA? <laughs> so I called the fellow who submits the information and yeah. asked him directly, what's going, what's the split? You know, wait, tell me what the thing is. And Dartmouth oversees their operations from a training point of view and from a personnel kind of point of view, yeah. they don't they don't fund, they don't fund provide people going out and, and, and dealing with local residents. So is um, there so at this point with the with the appointment, well yep. where you are, is there something that you need from the board or is this more informational just is kind of what we're doing? Well I think the only thing we'd like to to see is to try to get some agreement about a total budget number. I think the other stuff is just procedural things. Unless you see something that's real, that you object to the path that we're going down, I think it's more like a guidance for an overall number. I think that's um, a good idea. Uh, but I would also, I, I don't know if it was you or somebody else had said, you know, it's probably a good time to, you know, if we do, a, well, we have the last couple of years a, a town questionnaire, and all it was yeah. Yeah, heavily, we, uh, yeah. heavily in have the recreation in. department last year. But it, <laughs> it uh, you know, it could be a question that we have this yeah. year. Uh, you know, uh, funding mechanism in here are some options. What would people like to see? You know, mm -hmm. yeah. and, and get some feedback, and yeah. then we can come back to the board next year and yeah. with some of that information and, and and make some adjustments to the. Yeah. I mean, so you guys feel pretty confident in. We'll call the normal same procedure is good for this year. Yeah. So. I think they're still looking for a number. They yeah, still want clarification kind of, a, you know, of the total I mean, dollar amount. I like having a target. I think we like having a target to kind of shoot for. <clears throat> and last year just happened to fall in right around a penny. Can and we look over these and then try well, to come up with a better number next meeting? I mean, I think it's to difficult to. It. It. If you're going to drop the food shelf in the library, I mean, right. So I don't think I, that's, that, that's, I think what I think we're ask, I'm asking is the select board needs to separate these things. Don't throw something like the library or whatever at us. This is, this is, you need to, if you're going to throw the library to us, say, okay, we don't want to do more than X or whatever it is, and just throwing the food shelf at us and say, you know, they want thirty thousand dollars. Yeah, I mean, we we need direction. Well, and I think that was the that that was the challenge of the last, especially right. last year. Was normally our operating budget when I got on the board, I think it was somewhere in like twenty two thousand, and now it's in the high twenties. And and then it, when we have a which we've never had an ask like that, that the ask was larger than the budget. Like, you know, it's kind of. <laughs> Hard to put that in your budget, you know, because that took up the whole thing um, and then some. Like, well, if we can agree to take those two items out of the out of the uh, the existing human services list. So you think you need like twenty thousand? So if the select board said we'll give human services board twenty thousand dollars? Well, or or a penny or some kind of guidance. If we go <laughs> if we go five hundred over or five hundred under, it's no you know it's no. The tough thing we have deal. to be careful of is we are going through a reappraisal process. So we are. If we say a, a penny, impact. a penny now is going to be different yeah. than a penny in a year and a half from now. Yeah, yeah I think so. Yeah. That could drastically go up or down. Okay. So it's it might be better to have a. Dollar figure, you know, it, you know, not exact, but somewhere in the, you know, the not to exceed, not to, <laughs> um, well, not to exceed because as yeah. we found, but, but you also have to think if that if you had someone like visiting nurses say, hey, we just got a 
uh, philanthropist that just gave it $10 million, we don't need your 7000 anymore. That mm, doesn't mean four. we're going to give that to somebody else. Right. And, but the other thing we have to think of in the challenge, and in, in, I've seen it every year that I bet Bethel, um, is that people when they're sitting there at town meeting day don't always necessarily understand how that's going to impact them until later. You know, I mean, we mm -hmm. every year it's, you know, I can't afford my taxes and things are going up and I'm going to have a hard time of making ends meet. And then, you know, here comes the human services piece. And then, oh, here's a whole bunch of bolt-ons. And everybody votes it in because nobody wants to not vote it in. And then it becomes, now I can't afford my taxes. And it's like, you know, mm -hmm. so it's, in some ways it's kind of like a little bit of the responsibility of the board to try to put together a budget that people can afford, right? Um, so, I mean, if we gave you guys 30, but then there's $40,000 of repetitions, yeah. you know what I mean? You're, you're yeah. still, like, you've grown that, that piece of the budget by a lot. So and can we say that the ballpark that we're in right now is okay in the 20s, you know? Um, 26,350 was, was the year 23. In the past, it's even gone down. Yes. To us, because yeah. we're, they're going to send you, they're going to ask you, as long as we're giving them money, they will do it. We have cut people, we, in the past, we totally We've didn't dropped, fund them at all. We have apply. in the past cut, cut how much we were giving them. Some of the things that are hard to, to deal with, for example, mm -hmm. independent living counts um, uh, meals on wheels. South Royalton, South Royalton counts Meals on Wheels as, as Bethel people being worth. The food shelf counts, me, uh, counts people going there. So the same person is being counted in a whole bunch of different places. So I'm, I'm not trying to say they don't all need it, and, but in, in, you kind of got to think a little bit about how many people you're actually serving when you and I, I hate to put no, good people, good, good well-meaning people against each other, but by the same token, we don't need to make more people in need either. Right. Oh, I under, yeah, that makes sense. I never thought about it that way. Yeah. So like twenty-five. <laughs> well, going once, going I, once. And I, and I think a, 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 I think a number is a hard thing to do. Yeah, it is. It's hard. I think just, a, putting a number out. Just do a nod to You give us I mean, the one. You give us what you think we need. But if you want to have us deal with, we'll deal with it. And and say say for the sake of argument, one percent or one cent. And if we can't do that, we'll come back to you. All right. I, I will say that my opinion, but I agree. I think it should be a number and not a percentage, a penny on top, because, oh, penny, that's fine because the grand list fluctuates and you could lose one year. But you the know, so it's a yeah. funky number. Yeah. The whole point of giving it to us, we're researching and so no, I understand that. wants an extra thousand dollars. I get that. Five, they're getting 5,000 now. Now that's a 20% increase. Um, yeah. But we're looking at the whole. Yeah, you just need to come out with a number. So you what are you there. looking for for a number? I mean, I mean, I, th I think that we're looking for a total number. Yeah, yeah that's what well, we're, that's what I, we're talking about. Not, not, not yeah. individual. I mean, it was 25. Well, if you take, if, if you look at last year's list and if we take out the uh, Tri-Valley, if we can agree to put them on as a separate item. Tri-Valley and the food shelf. And out. the food shelf. And the library. Yeah. The library's no, we, not we don't have the library on so the human services. So 25 would be... They had a little bit, and then they asked. No, for that's more. in the regular town budget. That's it's not in the human services part. Oh, I thought they had a few thousand per. They do, but it's in the regular. It's in budget. the regular budget. Okay. It's not not part of this. Okay. So if you take those two items out and subtract it from the total, I think you're coming in around what around twenty one. Twenty one three sixty five. But if you look at, I mean, take take last year out of the equation. Yep. You know, unless that's going to be the norm. I mean, if you go back to 2023, and if you stick to those guidelines, like someone comes in with five to six thousand dollars, we're going to make them go petition, right? Um, you know, if you take your list from 2023 and probably go with what people are going to adjust some things to, you know, it's likely that South Royalton Senior Center, Tri Valley Transit, 
visiting nurses, those are all going to fit in that category potentially this year. Of mm -hmm. But they're dropping Tri Valley off. So what I'm saying right there is that's 15,000 of the 26, so that you know kind of leaves you down with 11,000. You're going to drop visiting nurse off. I'm not dropping anything. Well, I'm no, just saying, I'm saying if you do that, if you take, take Tri Valley off and then take off anybody only who's off the going to be shelf coming in and Valley, hire them. Right? I'm sorry. What? You guys were only taking off Tri Valley and the food shelf. Yes. So if you take I don't know what senior center is going so to do. So if you do. take Tri Valley what... off from the 2023, then it leaves you 22,350. Tri Valley and yeah. Because food shelf wasn't on. Yeah, right. and we don't have the playhouse on here either. So, no. given fluctuations, no. 25 is, playhouse is not on a good list. target. Tri Valley came in with a, with a request for 7600 over $7,600, and we went halfway because you know, we thought it was too big a jump, too quick. And they were fine with that. But we, I think, I would imagine this year it's going to come in. Probably over the 7,600. Well, they're going to see that we we voted everything in last year. So what the hell? They're, Bethel's got money. They passed um, it. They got left and right. Let's ask for more. Well. And it, it's kind of tricky because you know how we start our budget process is we <clears throat> we throw everything against the wall. You know, so mm -hmm. yep. and then as we get further and further into the process, we start to evaluate certain pieces to fit the budget, the mm -hmm. overall budget. You know what I mean? And so I mean, what might be I'll make it up. If we arbitrarily said twenty-five thousand dollars, twenty-five could turn into twenty to make adjustments. Is that something that the you know you'd want to make adjustments after the fact, or you know what I mean? Because we yeah. often, as the board, will will say you know we need this or could use that. And well, that's when we come to the we're board. So early as they say, he comes. They right. come, to, come the to the board. board and we numbers. present. Our so you're not asking for a number today. You're just asking for a target to keep in mind and try yeah. to stay in yeah. that yeah. realm of that. Yeah. I mean, we come to the board with our with our recommendations, and you right. guys can say, "Well, no, yes, move this, move that, right. add this, you know, so. whatever." Um, I think the simplest thing is, if you guys, if you guys send us a twenty-five thousand dollar thing, you need to understand that your budget's going to go up. So you guys need to tell us who you're going to put on that list. If you're going to put food shelf at $30,000 on our list to deal with, then we'll deal with it. But we need guidance from you. So does that, is it, am I making any sense? Instead of we're tossing this can back and forth. I think you, guys, no. you guys need to decide what's on our list. And, then, and at that point, if you're going to add something that's $25,000, you've got to understand if we okay $25,000, then your budget's going to go up. So you no, guys a, ultimately have this. Have well, then I'd want to pick this up next anyway. Anything well, over a certain amount is just petition. Anybody Maybe. over five is petition. I was going to say, I, I think what I said yeah. half an hour ago, what's the number that kicks them into a petition? Right. That's the number we need to work with. There's no, no, not going to be, in my opinion, uh, which would be my vote, Anybody for 30,000, 25,000, 20,000, 15,000, you're not in this group. I agree. You're not in this That's group. That's how it was last year. All right. Mm -hmm. All right, so I think we, I think we have a good idea of what, okay. what, who needs to be in the- Spend as little as possible, <laughs> and anybody <laughs> over five is gonna, or five, well, six, seven is gonna petition. <laughs> you know, you, you look at some of these numbers, 250, yeah. uh, 800, I you know. know, a lot of it is, it, they're agencies that get funding from other grant money from other sources. Right. What about and Orange they have County? to show they have to show local support in order to apply for these other grants, these other town, state, and federal grants. Orange County. Yeah. I think they have to do service. Based on Orange, Orange County, County service services. They serve the Bethel, Bethel, Bethel area. The folks here in Bethel. Um, they do a lot of stuff. Basically, the same agencies um, that service Windsor County are out of Springfield. I thought it was it, a pretty good chunk of change to send the kids it, there. It, it is, because a lot of that's mental health. A lot of that, and a lot of other things. It's, it's a pretty good sized packet. If that's you, if you read the, the whole packet. Yeah. No. No. No, we have, and, and uh, Jordan, we have the packets of information that are all available to, you know, to look at. Um, all right. OK. But you did mention something about uh, some of these things and maybe people that 
they don't service anybody. So you'll have that information. Yes. So, okay, so they only want $500, but they aren't doing anything for it. So right. you're, you're out this year. Well, that's why we ask them specifically, how many people, how many families, yep. you know, how many points of contact? So for now, we're just gonna, if it crosses a certain threshold, you're just gonna yep. point them to the process of having a petition. Yep. And then you guys will work together as a group on all the other requests. Mm -hmm. That makes sense for the town of Bethel after you examine mm -hmm. rideage usage, whatever it is, and then just bring that dollar figure to the board, whatever it might be, if it's right. 20,000 or 30,000, and then we will look at that and approve it. Is that, yeah, that what, what we're doing? What do we want to do with Tri-Valley? Do we want to keep them on this list, or do we want to move them? I think they would, I think they're over, at 7,600, they're definitely over, the, over what I think is limited. Yeah, but they worked them down. Well, we, we, we told them we, we couldn't do it. We'd go half the distance, and I think they're expecting so to go the other half. So if they weren't 8,500 and don't take 5,500, is that going to change? Sometimes negotiating with them, I mean, Chi Valley Transit is right. a good group. They might come in and say to you, hey, you know what? You we might want to try that out. We need to get to $12,000. I think I talked to Tom last year, and, yeah. and they were great. They were like, look, we realize it's a big jump, but maybe we could get to it over a course of two years or whatever. I always yeah. thought they were very practical. and. Uh, so, no, the, so what I'll tell Tom then is that he needs to go the petition route or come to the select board with his um, application and talk. Well, or you could say... I would love to see what you guys come up with on it. Or on something like that. I mean, I'm just using Tri-Valley Transit. If, if he puts in a request for $7,624 this mm -hmm. year, mm -hmm. you could just reach back out to him and say, you know, we've, we've looked this over. You know, our, our committee is willing to, you know, offer you... The maximum five thousand dollars before going to petition. Would you be willing to accept that, or mm -hmm. do you want to go to petition? You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, the other thing is they they like you know they're starting to ask because if they have to go the petition route, they need to start doing that. They do, and their sometimes homework. They yeah. Need to start, and, um, and I will say strategically, sometimes it's better for the select board to meet with the right. outfit and make a deal because yep. you may make a deal with uh, we'll just keep using Tri Valley Transit <laughs> nice folks to say hey you know they're willing to take uh, eight grand or whatever but if they petition they could petition for 16 mm -hmm. so you want to have some sort of control over that mm -hmm. as best you can yeah okay. so I think maybe having some people go to the select board first make sense before they petition because you may you know you may be able to work right, out so a I'll, deal. I'll point Tom in that direction. Sure. Have mm -hmm. you come and Cindy? Yeah, I, I could, I, just to follow up on that when I have some idea of what the process would be for us for the food shelf. because um, we came to the board, we went through the human services and got that letter and then we came here and we talked about it. And you agreed to put it, put us on the ballot. I guess it was a split, um, so that we did reach the thirty thousand dollars from human service, some from human services and some from the the voters. But so if if there's a process of, of having to do a petition, I, I, all we need is a timeline. We're ready. We're ready with our, or just about ready with our um, report our impact report so that you have the, all the numbers of people we're serving in Bethel um, and, you know, where our money's coming from, you know, and, and how it's going out, all of that. We're ready with that, but we, but the time, we can have that ready by December 1st, but if we have to have a petition, then we need to know, you know, what that timeline is and, Please. Seems Coming like to the board, what that timeline is. So. Have her, um, you know, once they get the report well, done, they can make an appointment with the select board, and then the select right. board can see the report, and make a decision whether or not they need to petition. Or not. I, just, I mean, I was just thinking I that. that. I mean, we have get signatures. Okay. You know, right? I'm just talking to Chris. Yes. Oh. I mean, right now we have like maybe two identities that we got to figure out. The food shelf is is one, and the library is the other. Like, do we? Do we? put them together in our budget or do we petition <coughs> separately and and maybe we could look through highlight last year's budget at the next meeting of what are those outliers that maybe we need to either at the next meeting talk as a board and say yes we're going to take care of that in our own budget or mm -hmm. we should give them or notify you to say we decided that 
you know, it, it'd be best to, to petition that. Um, that way it gives you plenty of time to, yeah. to do that. Because mm -hmm. um, the only ones I'm thinking is the library, we have food shelf. There yeah. might be another one in there, but. Yeah, I think, so. I think that, those would be the two. Well, I think those would try. And, and again, I think two years ago, we didn't didn't have that. No, you know, We had some library, but it wasn't nearly as much. And you know, now. I think you're going to be library, tri Valley. And is the idea for them to shelf. come here and we discuss what they're asking and what we're willing to maybe meet at yep. and then if we don't come to some agreement, then the petition. The, the petition. Yes, that's what I would say. Well, sure. but, the, but the challenge yes. to that is we don't know what we have until we get yes. further into the budget. budget. And yeah. once we get to the end of December or 1st of January, that doesn't give them ample time to go and put together their, it, you know what I mean? So right. it, it takes us, you know, we really start looking at the first pieces next meeting probably. We'll see. <laughs> uh, so norm normally like mid mid November we start looking at the first pieces like they and usually they're the easier pieces that to put together like fire department some of those right and then we get into some of the more harder pieces to put together like public works and things like that because we're working on prices for salt and sand and all this yeah. stuff yeah. Um, and then we you know and as we get going it, it, as we're putting it together initially it's just more information like here is what we're yeah. Kind of more of our, here's our want, not necessarily our need. And then as we start putting all these pieces together, we start adding up the number and going, well, <laughs> you know, the, the, the want's going to have to be a little less than that. So, well, that's the and I just would hate, you know, hate to push them along until the end when we're trying to put together, a, a, which normally we're right. first of January. But if they petition for a number, you can't, you can't, you can't put talk it down. about it. I know. So that was my thing. So are you going to be looking for another thirty thousand? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank we're not. Re we're not asking for an increase. <laughs> okay. There you go. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, it, it gives you the opportunity to say, you know, throw it in the first round and just say, okay, or we could do X, or you know. Yeah. I don't know, Chris. I mean, I get. Have you guys talked about Do you want to talk about it at the next select board yeah. meeting so we can yeah. do a little research with some numbers? Yeah. Is that what you're asking? Because I think you're right. You're going to have to be the library, tri Valley sure. Transit, and food shop. Mm. So you're looking for 30 no matter what? Um, I think we have support in the community to do that. And, and then I would we're, say I'm willing to go. I mean, this so is not the time to negotiate. Why don't we we'll make a. Um, well, we're going to be starting to talk about the budget yes, time, <laughs> so we can Apparently. we can add that to the um, to our agenda items. Is, is maybe just yeah. You don't need an answer in the next week or two. I have we're, I don't, we don't need an answer in the next week or two. We just yeah. need to meet, know what the process is so that we can <coughs> be timely. Yeah. Well, I guess you know the thing is too is that. Um, I mean, you understand the process. So, say you meet with the select board, and the select board says, "You know what? <clears throat> we can't do 30. We can give you 25." Mm -hmm. But you know, because that's all we can afford in our to put up forward a responsible budget to the town. Yeah. You're saying that you already have. You think you have support in the community. I'm sure you do to get signatures, which is 30. So, if P are, is the food shelf even willing to negotiate and accept less if the select board is saying we just can't afford it? We feel like this is an amount we can afford. Do you think there's a given take and I mean, there? Obviously, if they're, if, you know, if you've taken a look at the budget, and, but right now there, nobody's even looked at the budget. To know. Well, no, right. I mean, I do but it if, all the time, but yeah. If I mean, there it's, is no open negotiation, then there's no point. Right. Well, I'm not. I'm not. <coughs> She's not saying no. there's not. Well, yeah. okay. Well, well, that's that was the only question. Right. Yeah. It's just not, not appropriate. So then. Yeah. Right. So maybe in a, so in a couple of weeks we'll talk about it again and then we'll just get back to you. How's that? Yeah. It gives you plenty of time. So would, do you want our our numbers so that you can see the impact that we if have? If you have them, that'd be great. Yeah, just email them to me on my email. We're we're finalizing the, the sure. We're doing it for each community. Oh, perfect. Um, so uh, that we serve. So they're that would be they're great. being we're in our first draft right now. So yeah, we should have it in a week or so. Thanks. Yeah. yeah, that would be great. I think, and then we can talk about just that sort of thing. I can do some budgeting. We can great. That's look at perfect. it. That'd be great. Yeah. Thank you, Cindy. I appreciate that. That's perfect. Anything further with the human services piece? Mm -hmm. Good. For tonight? Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Scott.
All right. Thanks, Let's move yep. forward to Feel public like comment. So if there's anything, uh, anything that is not on the agenda that somebody may want to bring up or make comment, that would be the time. You know, well, I don't <laughs> come to many the na neighborhood conversations. Um, the one that I went to were a, a really great time to talk specifically about, you know, public safety and crime in our neighborhood. And it was pretty, pretty enlightening. So I'm looking forward to watch that as, there, as it wraps up and then unfolds in front of the, the uh, South Board. So nice job with that. It wasn't us. It was yeah. equity and inclusion and the I, town meeting. Yes. Yeah. And I'm on the town meeting. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. We can't, they get to for that. <laughs> you guys did a great job. All right. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. See you later. All right. What else? Uh, LV's online. Anything, LV? No. No, I'm just walking by. Okay. I have a question for Bernie. If you have a chance, do you mind if I email you? I was hoping you could help me do a little bit of research on a piece of Graham Street. It's not really class four, but you're, you're good at the research. And there's part of a deed that's a little rough. I'm just trying to figure out this connecting piece, what, how many rods wide it is. And I've already written to the state and gotten their stuff, and it's a little bit vague. I was wondering if you were bored over the winter, you might want to take a look at it if I send it to you. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> well, I'll send yeah, it. Just, yeah, email it to me. Yeah, it's just this weird loop on Graham, and I, I yeah, I'm at the loss. So I, I thought about you the other day. I'm like, I'm going to see the point. Let's just look at it. Okay. Hearing nothing else, what was that? Well, uh, first agenda item that we had was uh, discussion in regards to uh, looking at a 1% local option tax uh, on meals, alcohol, sales, and rooms. Yeah, so so I think that, Dave, when I reread the little bit of the packet, we can't use use tax, which really is, it's only 3,500 bucks, so it's not really a big deal on the spreadsheet that I gave you. But one thing that we don't have in here is alcohol, because um, the data is not reported by the state of Vermont for towns with less, with less than 10 businesses reporting meals tax. So, Using this number of 80,000, you can see that meals and rooms is based on 2023 numbers, and sales are based on 2022 numbers, which means this does not include um, the cannabis shop that opened, um, and, you, and there's the possibility of a second cannabis shop opening in Bethel. So, and this doesn't include alcohol. So, if this is instituted, um, I don't think the 80,000 is far off. And of course, it's a funky. It's a whole misnomer the way the state says. They say it's a 1% local option. No, it's not. No, it's not. They keep 30% of the 1%. We only get 70% of the 1% minus $5.96 per return. So I estimated that Sounds every- Sounds like charity at this point. I know. So I estimated <laughs> every, and different businesses either do returns quarterly or monthly. So I just estimated that everybody did a monthly return and multiplied it by six bucks. And you know, I'm like, oh, well, if only they could figure out something so convoluted. <laughs> yeah. So but, this, this figure has the 70% of yep, the dollar yep, in it? Yeah, it's, if you look at, you can see the number over here. So it's 1% is this, here's the state's 30%, here's our 70% minus $6 per return. So it were around $80,000. So we know that the, we only have a couple more years of the money coming into the general fund budget for um, the sale of the transfer station. So when, the, when that, by the time that goes, you will have had the townwide reappraisal in, in the mix for a couple of years. But I think that instead of, and, and Dave and I had talked about this, instead of dumping this money as just an open-ended revenue into the town coffers, in my mind, it makes sense to say, okay, we have eighty thousand dollars, so we're going to save part of it for uh, fire apparatus, and we're going to save part of it for capital equipment or something like that. Like put it into a fund, 
so that it's not coming in to supplement somebody's budget. It's coming in to actually, it, it will help the overall budget of the town because it'll put us in a better position for saving. Because as we've talked about multiple times, and we just know, we just bought a $600,000 fire truck. Um, not us, but. Yes, we did. Well, we didn't we did. do, it wasn't our money, but we bought it. Yes, we bought it. <laughs> so that's not going to get any cheaper. Trucks are not getting cheaper. We saw the price of yellow steel after COVID, and those prices are not coming down. The price of a grader is like <coughs> four or five hundred thousand dollars. Mike, I don't, I, you know. So it makes sense to me not to take this in as a revenue. And, but it's something to really think about because you know you don't have a lot of options for non-tax revenue. So it, it, you know, it's it's an opportunity the state is providing you. And if you have a cannabis shop now, you know that another one is coming. Um, that's the only way you're going to get sales tax off of cannabis is via sales tax because that $40 permit fee you're getting is just <laughs> not coming. So it's something to think about. Um, and well, something we want to certainly get input from the local businesses on too. Yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, the does fact this also apply to B and B's? Oh, yeah. I'm sorry, um, Airbnbs. If they, if they're legit, yes. Like most people that do it, say they go through Airbnb. Most people um, don't. If yeah. they go through Airbnb, then Airbnb. They claim it that way. Then if Airbnb pays yeah. the taxes, so if they actually go through that software, that platform, they do pay the taxes, and that's the way it would go. So yeah, I mean the thinking is about, at least in my mind, about meals is if you're going out to dinner, or you're going out to have a couple of drinks and appetizer, probably not really one percent isn't really going to stop you from going. And um, is, that's you know my opinion, but it's just something to think about because you really have limited options. It's other than that, you're just you're constantly raising taxes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, you could do the one percent localized tax, and a portion of that revenue could be your human services budget. Something, yeah, but just saying. Nah, no. Why not? No. Because that kind of then you're not funding it 100 percent, Dave. It could be because raises for the select board. It, I, I, think, I think you need to keep that funded where the taxpayers can see that. Yeah. I think that money, but, that 80000 needs to go where we can put it. But the problem we have is that human services, we're all bleeding hearts and we all want everybody to do great in life, but that cost is growing faster than we can pay for it. And sometimes and I so, think there's some things in human services and like I said, that need a little the, more the, regulation and a little more information before you pass out some free money. Well, I'm just saying that really the tricky thing is we have so many people that go, well, in this case, regardless if, if we voted by paper ballot or went in person, we have so many voters that go there and they don't understand how all these different articles affect them, right? They do understand once they finally get the bill. Well, that's what I was trying to explain right, but last year to the people. I was, I was thinking on the food, food shop and that you keep asking for all this money and you're going to need more because there are people that are on the edge. And when, you, when they have to pay this extra 30 grand, <clears throat> part of that is their money. Now they're in, at your door because they need help. Yeah. And now, now you want more money. Yeah, and you more get you more tax, money and then a, another person is at your door. The more you tax, the more there's going to be need. And but I'm just thinking right now, I mean, our, our human services budget has more than doubled, right? Because you're including the library. Well, I'm just saying, and it's yeah, going to no, keep going. <laughs> and so not only are we going to hit them with, you know, uh, one and a half to two cent increase on human services, but now, you know, now, you know, this is a tax too. I mean, now this becomes, yep. and granted, uh, a, a Bethel resident Isn't the only don't make up all $80,000 no, of this. No, they no. might make up. $35,000 of it, you know? So there is a stream that comes from out of state yep, or out of town people, Yep. Uh, but it's still a tax, right? I mean, mm -hmm. it's, you know, we're always famous for that in Vermont. Oh, the tax didn't go up, oh, everything else went up. You know, the <laughs> registration went up and that went up and that went up. And once you figure it out, your taxes did go up by a lot. So, mm -hmm. it, you know, and it, I just look at it, you're, you're gonna have another, and I know, it's not necessarily the town's issue, but you're going to have another humdinger at the, the school this year. <coughs> we did not get affected by that no. last year. But I think everybody's got to be ready for that. 
Um, I mean, our budget here went up over 10 cents last year. Yeah. 10 cents. I mean, we brought a three cent budget to the table, which was very responsible. And we have so many people in this town that complain about their taxes and they can't afford to live. Mm -hmm. They can't afford to pay for their water bill. And then they voted seven more cents in. Like it was unreal. Uh, you know, this, I want to use the word irresponsibility, but I mean, people are, are not really understanding what they're paying, you know, what they're doing. They're not coming to vote. That's my, my whole big, this, you know. There was not a discussion on 1,900 this. people in the town to vote and 110 people come in and make all the decisions. Mm -hmm. That is ridiculous. Yeah, that's but, why they went with the paper ballot for officers and some of the, instead of everybody being elected off the floor because people were complaining they couldn't go and it was the same thing. A hundred people are voting in, you know, who's in office and- Right, it didn't really change much, did it? As no. far as how many people voted last round ballot. Yeah, I used to have an assistant, um, Pete Ryan, he was retired from the state, so he was, in his 70s, and he'd be like, you know, Trace, we should just sit in here and start run hand out tax bills before they leave after town meeting. Mm -hmm. I was like, but I mean, that's just, laugh, it's the it's system true. that we have. It, it is the system it, we it, have. It, it's not, well, it's not the system, it's people. It's, it's you know, people. I'm sorry, the, shoot me if you want, but it's the truth, is everybody has the opportunity to go to town meeting. Come it's on. State law. I, I see all. I know. I, I, mean, I beat my head against the so wall. So if you take the, you know, the 200 that goes to town meeting day, I can tell you the other 1,800 of them that didn't go to town meeting day, they take days off all the time. You know, why not take the most important day of the year off, right? They'll they'll take their vacation time and they'll take, uh, oh, I'm sick today or. You know, or you know, they'll take all those other days off. Late last night, but they won't be responsible. And I know, I know, I have friends in this town that have very flexible schedules. Never been to a town meeting day, right? Be the first ones to complain about everything. You know what I mean? And it's, and it's always this whole thing. You know, it was like the school budget. You know, everybody was up in arms about oh, a hundred and whatever, hundred and seventy-six people. You know, decided the school budget. We're going to re revote, 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 right? They didn't even get enough signatures to revote, yeah. you know? So it's like. And it's hard, too, because you're not going to change that. People are going to come to town meeting that choose to come to town meeting. And yeah. you can move it, you can do it at night, you can do it you still Tuesday, have the same Saturday during the day, potluck, no potluck. You're going to have, same have um, Just child care, no child care, feed them, don't feed them. I mean, it's always the same. I mean, yep. other than you get a different sample population of people. Yeah. yeah but you're right, there is a state forever. law that allows people to have. I mean, town meeting off, it is a... It allows, it doesn't mandate. <laughs> no, but it, it says you can. I mean, there's a law well, about it. it. it Wouldn't it, it be nice to mandate you, it and expect everybody to be there? You, oh, you call you, 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 have, you, have a couple <laughs> things you, you have a couple things you have to do to do it, but they, your employer cannot keep you away as long right. as you, no, no, as long as you do they a couple things. You. But you, you can oh, go. You, tell you could take a PTO <laughs> day. I know get that. Do they take away? How do we tell them to fix it? But... Take one PTO day, get paid for it, and then save a ton of money by controlling the taxes. Oh, there you go. I, I, I am so confident that, that you could give everybody the day off paid by the state of Vermont, and you'll still have the same amount of people show up. <laughs> Brian, you want to take that back? <laughs> All right. I agree with you. Select board meeting, go to town meetings. I had an employee that I said. You take, t you take Tuesday off, I'll pay you. As long as you go to town meeting. I'm not going. <coughs> Guess what, buddy? You're working. You're, you're working. <laughs> you're working. Mm, they'd rather. Uh, I mean, I think... Uh, he was getting paid. I was going to pay him. So I had to ask Therese there, you know, what was... Um, the, she had shown me some data. I want to say it was this year. Uh, yeah. Well, I'm sure or, it was. Or late last year. There was some data that was... Packet. Yeah, I did see it in that pack, though. There was some I'll data that was done that, that talked about um, localized sales and what percentage of that was residents versus I wonder if it was the zip code survey. Yeah, that sounds familiar. Maybe yeah. it was the zip code survey. And there's a, the number that stuck in my head was somewhere around 40% oh, yeah, of, of the goods yeah, that were purchased in I Bethel were by residents. Yeah. I can add it to the next one. When we say residents, that's just Bethel. Yes. You know, and then... And then the other 60% were made up of either area residents yeah. or out-of-state yeah. people. 
All right. bet on that? Well, we can do, I can put the zip, I think that's what it was, remember, because they were trying yeah. to do a zip code survey. Yeah. So maybe that was, I, I couldn't come up with it today. I, I was thinking retail. Well, we talked about leakage, so I thought, thought that term, and I'm like, all right. So I can do that, but it's definitely something to keep in mind when we go to do the budget. And I talked Absolutely. to the lady at the state, and what she said was, <coughs> if you institute, if you vote on this at town meeting and it goes into effect, in March, then it would be effective July 1, which is perfect because that's when our budget starts. So it's definitely something to think about, and um, I'll get you the zip code survey in the next packet so that you can think about that. Okay. Well, correct me if I'm wrong, but the one thing about this tax, a lot of it, a lot of that is you have the choice to spend that money or not. You personally. You personally. Yeah, you know, I, I don't want to pay that tax. So I'm going to make my own food, and make my own alcohol, and whatever. I'm not going to smoke cigarettes, and I'm going to so my Make clothes, your own alcohol. Whatever. What, what I'm saying is. to start growing beer on the hill. We race around. We got enough going on up there. We don't need you brewing. Back in the truck. <laughs> yeah, no, you're right. But it's not like the gasoline tax. Right. Because you were forced to buy right. gasoline. It is an option tax. You're right. So, I mean, it's. I it's, think that's the key word. It's an yeah, option, option tax. Yeah. So, I've been writing some of these. Uh, it sounds like, well, not to get off topic, but the human services piece and probably this localized tax piece mm -hmm. are maybe things that should be. Um, Put on into a, um, well, the a local, questionnaire. For, the local option tax you're going to have to put on the warning. Right, but I'm saying if, if we didn't want to move forward or put on the warning, but we wanted to, you know, put it out there as a question, mm -hmm. would it be supportive or not supportive? Right. You know, why why put it on there? If, you know, if 80 percent of the people say we don't want it. Why even put it out there for a? Right. Option. Only five percent of people are going mixed. to vote. So what the hell? <laughs> but if we, if we, it's only four people. But you know. let's look at the zip code survey because if the majority of the eighty thousand is being paid by people out of state, out of town, not Bethelites, mm -hmm. then That's that might be a little yeah. easier to. Yeah. And also, one percent on a soda is a little bit easier than a penny on your tax rate. You know, I think that you kind of, you know, think about that. But you know, yeah, it's obviously your call. It's just. Uh, not mm. trying always trying to think of, of, of like when Tozier's is news. open that's not you know that's probably 75 percent out of towners that go right there. sure or that, and you a know, lot of people that go to babes are from out of town especially on the weekend and during ski season right. and, and you know at that two to four o'clock it's some locals but they're not letting us put up a toll booth we might as well you know yeah. well again yeah, just yeah. because two to four is local off, time we're all to, <coughs> yeah babes or, or whatever yeah, yeah actually we're two to four all right bunch of people that's money. true. That's really that's a really good point, Denise. So, all right, I'll look put the zip code. Can we, can we increase it or decrease it by the season? No. Once you're you're in six season. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So leave right. keeping. It's twenty percent. Okay. All right. Next. Anything further on that for now? Or no. Nope. Good? No. Then we had the uh, appointment of Dana to town moderator. Uh, he is the only applicant. <laughs> I, we had yeah. a little friend. Oh, you, is I, that your application right yeah, there? Yeah, I may or may not. Town moderator. So, may or may he not. He is the man. He he has. Uh, mm -hmm. Very interested in it. He will be good guy. Oh, out of state for well. the um, training, but he said he could do it via Zoom. And and Rick Benson is still you know ready to help him out, give him some pointers, and he oh he was. This is good, but he said, you want an old man like me? I said, old man, my foot. I said, you can, you know, if you're interested. Oh, yeah. Do you know how old Daniel Miller was when he last served? Nope. About 80. There you go. Yeah, you know, people say they're busy, but. Yeah, Dave, 80's young. But wasn't, um. I, I didn't say well, it was old. Shh. I just said it was 80. <laughs> Oh, I understand that. Yeah, Jim wow. Douglas. He was I'm a seven, so so he is not, not that far away. He said he couldn't have been any busier than he found time for a moderator. 80 <laughs> is older. Older. Yeah. Let's <laughs> not. Has the, move on. Has, has the yeah. current moderator resigned? Yeah, remember oh, he didn't yeah. run again. He didn't run again. He didn't, he didn't run, run again. Last year, last year was so you last have year. So no one ran, so you need to appoint somebody to do the town meeting 2025. But if Dane is interested, he's also going to have to get on the ballot to be a moderator for 2026 because Rick Benson did not run. Nobody ran last year. So you currently don't have a moderator. Mm -hmm. And 
if there's no moderator, the yes, select board chair <laughs> moderator That's make this awesome. motion. That's <laughs> awesome. You should be the first one but to make the motion. <laughs> but we elect the moderator as the first order of business. Not Career. anymore, you don't, because Australian ballot. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So he didn't run. Yeah. Well, now, so I don't know. I figured you'd be maybe, making a motion. Yeah, maybe we eight. don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's oh, weird. As long as you want to have town meeting day before the end of December. That's that's right. You're not smiling. <laughs> I motion to approve. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. All right. All right, so. Yeah, I think he'll do a really good job. Yes. And then to talk about um, Gilead Road in regards to the speed study that was done there and potential yeah. um, changes to that. So I'm sure Brian saw it. So they were um, basically, in a nutshell, it was actually pretty funny because you know how people are. Everybody's like, oh, Stan, but they're just flying past me flying past me. I'm like, you know, but the funny thing was the average speed um, in the 40 mile an hour zone was 34. <laughs> so people were not, so actually it worked to the benefit because the select board can drop the speed limit there to 35 if they had been going <clears throat> higher. They wouldn't you let know, you because they would it, say that. <clears throat> no can do because, it's, well, you know, there's other factors you can take into consideration, but thank God it worked out. So, well, you got to imagine the ones speeding are probably a handful of individuals. Yeah. 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 And somebody kept driving over at like 20 miles that an was hour smart. to keep it down. That so. was my. That was my advice. So, <laughs> yeah, and so it was. It was interesting too if you looked at the whole, you know, study I gave. It's like we're. I mean, there was multiple pages, yeah. but if you looked at, you know, how many. It gives you all the you know, combined data yeah. of how many average daily travel and how many cars and this and that. So it was actually pretty interesting. But, um, but yes, it, it, so it's a process too, and I, I did remind Sandy Levesque of that, um, that it's a process to amend an ordinance because once you, you know, you have to post it in five places, people have like 44, um, you know, 40, the, let's see, they can, once it's out, then you say that, yes, we're going to do it. we got to put it in the newspaper. you got to post it in five places. 5% of the voters could vote to say no. Um, but once that time passes, the ordinance doesn't actually come into effect for X amount of days. It's a whole thing. Mm -hmm. This is not an overnight thing. But so this is the start of it. And as you can see in your packet, there's the notice of amendment of the traffic ordinance. And mm -hmm. so basically it's just that first mile. Um, should have done the speed study before we took it to dirt. Yeah. The average speed was what? 15? 22. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Should we do 35 up and 60 back? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the average is out. <coughs> we'll see what we got in the budget for science. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I actually did ask them yeah, the road crew the other day. I'm like, you got any 35 mile an hour speed limits kicking around? They said, yeah, they thought they did. But even so. if you, I mean, if you drive a dirt road, a random dirt road, and, and you drive what you think you're going fast without looking at the speed, and then you look down, you're not doing more than 30, 35. I mean, it's pretty hard to do 40 plus on a dirt road. You think, Dave? No, I was gonna say, I, can, I think we could, you know. We could, we could, I mean, maybe go downhill. No, they're going uphill but, past uh, my house. When I, when I look out and Number 20 That's right. That's we were on pavement, we didn't go to the dirt roads, but. Yeah. Um, well, so at this point, we just um, need a motion from the board. Yep. I'd motion to approve 40 to 35. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> all right. Then, um, then we had the town manager's contract. Oh, we can do that. We don't do the town manager's report first? No. Oh, you want to do that? Oh, yeah. Duh. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Sure. So we had we passed out the, uh, yep. the revised town manager's <laughs> contract, which really <clears throat> didn't have any b big significant changes to it. No, I can tell we you. Over last time. Yeah, the changes in the term, obviously, from 2024 to 2026. Um, that was a change. Uh, Bethel in one place that needed to be capitalized. I fixed that. Um, uh, 
So the termination process, disability process, all stay the same. Salary is what it is in the town and court that was approved. There's no change there. Performance evaluation is the same. Paid time off benefits are changed only in the sense that I still have the same amount of vacation time. I can just accrue it at different, um, accrue more than I did before, because it always screws me in January. Um, I used to get $25 a month for my cell phone, and this would be $35 a month. Do you oh like boy. It? Well, because it's my only phone. I'm sorry, but I I, <laughs> oh. I am not carrying two phones. Oh, Everybody man. else gets fifty, but I'm like, no, nope, yeah, I do. She's upgrading the flip phone. I think I <laughs> phone, and then I pay for the rest myself because I still use it. Actually, a flip phone cost. a flip phone now costs more than a regular phone. See? <laughs> um <laughs> So my insurance bennies. Oh, you'll be getting Apple Watch now. Yeah, no, I think not. Are you, you know, I pull into my driveway and mute my phone. That's it. Like, game over. I'll check it later in the night. But don't. Unless, I always hit notify anyway. Or or, Is it yeah. iPhone? So if you call more than twice, it rings? No. No. Are you sure? It, I know I don't have an iPhone. <laughs> you know, look. Yeah. Well, the Android must have so something like it. I don't have. So retirement we'll plan it. didn't change. <laughs> due subscription, that didn't change. Indemnification, other terms. So really, there was not changes um, in it. Like I said, there was like a spelling error, and uh, and that was it. And the change of the role over the time. So that's it. And the, yeah, because I got input from Denise. I don't know if you, did you get any input from anybody else about any mistakes that they found. Okay. <laughs> All righty. And then, uh, then uh, just so you know, the motion would be for you to authorize uh, the select board chair to sign, which so just gives a place for Chris and I to sign, if you want to sign it. I'm sorry, repeat the motion? I haven't had it I yet. Said if, I said if, <laughs> if they make a motion to sign it, then to uh, the motion will be they would have to authorize Chris to sign it. Okay. But um, I motion Chris to sign. To you. The I just contract. want to have it in case they do it. I'm yeah. doing it. <laughs> all right. I second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Are you sure? Are you really <laughs> sure? <laughs> that's for four years now, right? Yeah, that's what I thought I saw. No. That was one of the corrections. That was the correction. No. I yeah. Did not. That's right. Just wouldn't be signing that. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, there we go. <laughs> there you go. Put you up front of the voters. There you go. Oh, well, yeah, why not? Well, you kind of do because my salary's in the town resort, so they vote my salary. All right, there we go. Two more years. So they can only change the budget, they can't change the line item. Yeah, they can't. Only you can fire me. You as a board. Not you personally. <clears throat> <laughs> All right, family average report. So does anyone want to serve on the equipment committee? Um, it used to be Mo, and, and we don't have to, I'm just asking, I'm just trying to offer. Because it used to be Mo Brigham. Now obviously Mo's not here anymore. So it's um, currently is sure. Ryan, Why not? Ryan Slack, <laughs> Jeff Gilman, Ray Blakeney, AJ, Myself usually the road crew guys around. I just do the money. I help them with the finances. So I don't know if anyone's. You don't have to. I mean, I'm not. No pressure. Brian, you want to go on the equipment committee meeting? Me either. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I just do the money. You put gas in it or diesel. Yeah, yeah so we're actually going to have an equipment better. committee meeting in November. Um, so we're looking at a new loader because that's on the on the in the schedule to be purchased. So I said no. The trouble is this new equipment, even those names you, you uh -huh. mentioned, this equipment is just so far above those guys. Yeah. yeah, the good thing is that they go to shows, especially Jeff Gilman, he tends to go to shows. You know, Ryan is lucky because Ryan gets a new fleet that, you know, state comes in and new, he gets yeah. new stuff. But they still, you know, they will do research. Ryan will be online looking at stuff, talking to people, and Jeff goes to trade shows. And they, they, they're also really good about making decisions as far as, okay, look, here's the grader. It was a good example. All right, they felt that if they put money into it, it was a better move because the grader was so expensive. And Jeff was good because he said, listen, some of these new ones coming out are a piece of crap. 
So I think if we hold on to this one a little longer, these are some things coming out. So they also have connections, and, and they're always, like I said, willing to do some research and look at the numbers. So um, like I said, Mo used to do it. He wasn't big in the equipment either, but he was willing to learn, and he'd go look at stuff if someone wanted to. And I know that with the loaders that I think the state, Ryan has one, and then I think Demi maybe has one in Royalton. So there's places locally they can go kick the tires on a couple of these things. And um, so, I, you know, it's, it's nice. They kind of talk amongst themselves. Or they'll know someone to call and find out what the skinny is. Yeah, see, for me, I could, you know, kicking the tires doesn't do anything. I want to know what's inside that thing. Yeah. And how long that inside shit's going to work. Yeah. Because a loader, you drive up, you pick up some dirt, and you go dump it in a fucking dump truck. Yeah. Excuse me. I'm sorry. <laughs> Put that on the record. <laughs> but Get the that, that's basically what the loader does. But yeah. why does it do it? And how does it do it? And how long is it going to do it that way? Well, that's, that's <laughs> why you, why whenever we buy them, now we buy the extended warranty. Because pretty soon, no one's going to be able to work on anything. Nice. We're going to have to hire yeah. computer techs they come because... Did you hear that? They, I got, I'm going to take a break here. No. The, here, what? The I heard McFlurry, nothing. McFlurry's at McDonald's, and they're breaking down all the time. Okay. Okay? Yeah. The people who make them, Taylor, had a contract that no one could touch them to repair them. So now the government has finally come back and said, just like they did with John Deere, you can't do that anymore. And apparently... <laughs> Any person that can pick up a screwdriver can fix one of those things. <laughs> Shocker, huh? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so, all right. So it was I on the news today. It was like, so you're saying the McFlurries are going to be running now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no problem with the ice cream machine anymore. I'm sorry. Just when you no, say that, that M&Ms think... now, is that what's going to happen? <laughs> That's right. It, 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 they it was on the radio when I, can't give it I was driving it was on the radio. I was like, <laughs> wow. Right. If I had more time to give, I'd do it. But no, it's but fine. It's just something just no that's chance. fine. We've got people there. I just wanted to let you know. Um, so, okay, we talked about that. So I have had Dietrich doing some research about sign-on bonuses and retention bonuses for the road crew. As you know, Todd Ashley um, moved, so he's not with us anymore. And um, it's tough going right now. The Pomfret just hired Sharon's road foreman, and so... It's four or five in the paper last week. Yeah, so everybody's looking. I had a good conversation with Ryan Slack about the state is actually doing scion bonuses. So I asked him how it worked. We talked a little bit about that. Um, and, you know, retention bonuses can make sense for when you have, this is, this is exactly why retention bonuses are good at this point, is when you have a department or a situation, which we do in Vermont right now, where you're kind of in a crisis. You want to keep the people you have. I don't want AJ to go anywhere. I don't want, you know, Morgan to go anywhere. I don't want Paul Feeney. You know, I know he's coming back as a seasonal. So I currently have, you know, two ads out because we could take another seasonal. That would be good. Or another full time. And so right now, if I look at those ads, nobody is advertising that their other towns are doing sign-on bonuses or that they're doing retention bonuses. Now, I'm not saying I'm going to give the retention bonus to the road crew for the next, you know, three years. I'm not saying that, you know, but I, I'm saying that I think it's you want to reward employees, but it also would be similar to a sign-on. They have to stay. There's specific parameters, and there would be a policy written, basically a contractual that they have to sign as to how they get the money. So it's just an option that I'm pursuing because I think it's, I think this is where we're at right now because currently AJ, Morgan, Paul can run the routes, the gravel routes. So we have the gravel roads. We are talking to someone about doing the side streets, so that would take care of that. But what I am missing right now is someone to do Camp Brook in that route. So I talked Ryan, to Ryan. Ryan's got an extra guy. I asked Ryan Slack about that today. I said I heard Hallery yesterday, as a matter of fact, I said, hey. Are you doing the route in Rochester? I don't think so this year, Trees. I'm like, so you're not going to drive a plow truck over Camp Brook? And he's like, no. So, um, you know, so right now, I don't know what we're going to do. You know, I, I have the ad out. I put it out again. And so, I, don't, I mean, a seasonal, <clears throat> another seasonal would get us there. But I'm actually looking at 
contracting as well. So I have two mm -hmm. contractors in the mix also. Um, one we've spoken to a little bit. He's coming in the beginning of November to chat. And then the other number I gave to AJ to have him reach out. So we may be even looking at contracting with someone to take care of certain roads. Um, I told AJ as that or he was going to teach me how to plow. So <laughs> I told Joanne I would do one pass. She goes, just one pass up the middle of Camp Brook Trees. I'm like, okay. And uh, nothing on a Friday night or a Sunday. Night. Yeah, <laughs> so I don't know. So it's it's definitely something to think about. The other thing to think about is if we get you know, knock on wood, some good applicants, we will pick them up. And it will overspend that budget, but it will end up absorbing some of the undesignated fund balance because we're in a position now where, you know, if the opportunity arises where we get good candidates, um, you know, we're fighting the fight against a bunch of other towns as, you know, as well as... Are there any towns that are doing this uh, sign-on and retention that are having good luck doing it? Well, no, because nobody's offering it right now. So that's another reason I think it's a good time for us to do it. The state actually did it, which is nice. And, but, you know, there's not a big district here, so we're competing for the same folks that either, the, and the seasonal doesn't even have to have a CDL because the plow route, that truck doesn't require a CDL. Hmm. So, I, you know, I'm just saying it's an option that we're looking at and to kind of figure out at this point, what's, you know, what our options are. I, so. I know in the private sector, the, you know, di different companies have tried sign-on bonuses. Like, mm -hmm. sometimes you see, like, over-the-road haulers yeah. and things yep. like that. But at the end of the day, most of the time, if somebody does not pick your em em employer mm. based upon right. a hiring bonus. Yeah. Ask, ask GW. So, I yeah, did it I for a while. Works. Yeah. I tried it out, and they, it just more per hour. That's I yeah. mean, it's just this dollar per hour yeah. is all that matters. You don't really so. grab anybody different. Um, but I, it's, I, I think you know what we should just make sure that we are doing is is evaluating our neighbors because you know I'm doing usually what, you're not going to get somebody from no. afar. It's going to be somebody within a town or two different right. you know that <coughs> potentially come here. And I think you just got to make our total package at or slightly above well, and it is, what the norm is. Because I, I'm a, I did a salary survey. So I found the towns that have similar grand lists, similar roads, similar budget, similar, you know, so I've done a salary survey. And, and municipalities all tend to have similar, like, health benefits. We have, you know, the, where the premium is paid and a portion. Some people pay the whole deductible. Um, every, we all probably have the same amount of holidays, vacation, and... Um, a couple towns, so you know, so that's why I was like, okay, what do we don't we offer? And I, you know, I'm not saying it's going to work, and I'm not saying I'm going to do it. It's just something that I'm considering doing mm -hmm. because there's, you know, if if Brantry is looking and Randolph is looking and Sharon is looking and, and we're Britt. looking, yeah, for a thousand dollars, yeah, maybe they look, you know, because they'll at least look at it, right? And it, and it's not like we're giving a thousand bucks out of the gate. Uh, Ryan told me they did four hundred like the first week, and then four hundred after six months, and then four hundred after, you know. Yeah. So it's broken down. Yeah. You know, so I don't know. Like I said, it's just something <coughs> looking at. Yep. Um, yeah. Richard and Kelly successfully submitted our service line inventory to A and R. So, which we all know is going to go to the EPA. So. <sighs> I don't know, you know, a, a year or two, and the rumor is been repeated that the state is sitting on a bunch of money, federal money, that for us to replace, obviously the priority would be any lead service lines, which we don't have, but they consider galvanized, you know, lead. So it could be that um, the state could come to us and say, basically, you have X amount of service lines you, that you need to replace and um, they'll give us the money but it's on private property and because normally anything after the curb stop is the homeowner's responsibility that's what our ordinance says I had a conversation mm -hmm. with Cindy Parks at the drinking water and I said I'll be interested to see who sues you first and she said what do you mean And I said everybody's ordinance says that after the curb stop it's the homeowners well we can't make you know 15,000 you know loans I said so you're gonna force it on us which means now I need to have a 
project manager to run it, money for this, that, and the other. Mm -hmm. So <coughs> I talked to Richard and said, look, and I also talked to Aldrich Janelli and said, let's not, we're not gonna do another planning loan for another water project. I really want a break from that. Richard does too. Plus, if the EPA pushes this faster in the next couple of years, then we might as well just wait a little bit, see what's gonna happen with EPA money. We may end up doing a smaller project within, you know, wherever <coughs> we have water line replacements or something. Maybe we say, okay, we have this, we'll do a piece of a line. So I, I don't know, I don't know the time frame, but they keep saying the state has all this money. I'm like, really? <laughs> interesting so I think we'll wait and we gotta wait and see on that looks like we will be switching from Blue Cross Blue Shield to MVP I had a conversation or email back and forth with MVP I looked at Blue Cross Blue Shield gold to Blue Cross Blue Shield silver it's still gonna save us more money to go to <coughs> MVP silver um, looked at the HSA versus HRA that we talked about and um, so just need to finalize some details with them but I but it looks like that's what we're gonna do to try to get a handle on the costs. It's the same coverage, I don't know why we would stay. And we can't, if we gave money for the HSA, that money has to be spent first, so it really wasn't a, uh, I think we'll end up staying with HRA, but. So anyways, that's as far as the insurance uh, has gone, and I think, that's as he, yeah the auditors are there so it's kind of a zoo for a couple of days. <laughs> Don't try to park in the town office because you ain't getting in. <laughs> Go see Pam. We have us all like crowd. I, I, I texted Dietrich this morning. I'm like park as close as you can to my car. You can get out because the three of the auditors they drive you know they have three they don't come together so run out of space. Thanks, car. Are you? Did you see my new black Mercedes parked in the parking lot? <laughs> <laughs> I did. It's not mine. <laughs> One of the auditors. Rex Brigham's, yeah. Okay. So, unless you I had, had a tight table, no parish, to be honest with you. Huh? Yeah. I had a tight table, no parish. Yeah. <laughs> and people are funny, too. They, if you sat there, you would be shocked how many people whip into there to turn around all day long. Or the people that are a little sketchy. <laughs> pulling in or backing out. I thought for sure someone, this uh, older gentleman, just started backing out. I didn't see him look, and I'm like, oh my God, oh my God. And uh, he made it, but then today there was a truck on yeah. the opposite side driving towards town on the sidewalk, mm -hmm. and they pulled out, and they started to pull out, and there's a big, you know, yeah. Mack truck coming, and I'm like, oh God, this is, <laughs> and then they got back up, but they drove at, several hundred feet on the sidewalk before they finally go. <laughs> but I don't know. I also heard today that the, I did not notice, but apparently the state, did you notice that they covered the um, yeah, I did graffiti know. on the I, I noticed that when yeah. I was driving through and I was like, yeah, last, was that I like noticed that? at the end of the week. I couldn't remember. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I didn't know. Even noticed it caught my eye when I was coming back today, yeah. but I didn't know if that so happened. That's, that's a clean there. slate there now. Yeah, well, it was By funny. Fish, I guess. <laughs> because it was, yeah. Just beyond yeah. the fish. Because they were the state <coughs> bias <coughs> rock buddies, so and they had a paint that I said to them, oh, you're going to want to use a thick nap roll Don't keep because, going. Because that is just going to cart keep, it just no, cool. how runs off. Uh, I said, let me know how that works out for you. But yeah, so they covered it. The, I guess big gray it's not the town patches. Town. I didn't notice really it yesterday. Yeah, I noticed it today. It's the railroad. Yeah, so. Right. Yeah. But okay. It, it, they just That's it. Okay. All right, we have the select board meeting minutes of the 14th. <clears throat> Motion to approve the select board minutes of Monday the 14th as written. Probably taking that. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. There were a few communications <coughs> that were in there. Yeah, I, I thought that you would be interested. I think I, think I sent this to Brian, too, just because we've all been following the whole uh, municipal authority to maintain legal trails is challenged in Tunbridge. Like, that was one I sent you, right? Yeah, it's pretty interesting, so we've all been kind of keeping a handle on that. Uh, the sheriff's is saying uh, $75 an hour next year, so I'll work that into the budget. 
amazing. He only charges you 75. He charges us 125. Oh, yeah. If he's it's different for detail. And you don't yeah, even do anything. You just sit there. It's more dangerous. For 120, yeah, real dangerous. <laughs> detail, right? 125 bucks yeah. an hour to do nothing. <laughs> he used to be our friend sitting in the car. Yeah. That's a long day. Unreal. Yeah, that's gotta yeah. be boring as heck. Well, they, yeah. get, they get the rest when they're there. <laughs> yeah, the team. <clears throat> I know, so yeah, someone used to do it and they just would sit there. Oh, Oscar's done it before, and I remember he, he used said to, one guy used to like, keep his, watch movies. He used to keep his door open and his leg out like this. <laughs> <laughs> so it looked like he was alive. <laughs> yeah, they get their, their computer screen up, yeah. yeah. And you drive by, oh, yeah. like going into Lebanon, that. it's like. We're like that the looks only like a state movie. there. Most of the states have like. Troopers that patrol work zones and <clears throat> Vermont doesn't do that. Right. Like New Hampshire, it's the ha it, troopers will pull you over if they don't mess around. There. Here it's sheriffs when you can get them. You yeah. know? Mm -hmm. And everybody knows that the sheriff is going to pull you over in the work zone. So, you know, yeah, exactly. right through it like nothing. So. Uh, My friend, you're supposed to sign it. You don't want to sleep. You told me to bring it. Oh, yeah. Right, right here? Phew. Um, and then I think the only thing I had from last time is I was talking to the board members on um, that the, I haven't decided if I'm going to run or not. Um, so it's probably in the best interest of the board that um, the end of December will, I'll step down as the chair of the board. So that'll give somebody else the opportunity on the board to you know, get three or four meetings under their belt before town meeting day, just in case, you know, things change. And um, so, but, uh, I talked to everybody individually at the last meeting or so. so. <coughs> yeah, so Paul wasn't there, I think, right? Yeah, he was yeah we hooky. talked last night. He was playing hooky, yeah. <laughs> yeah, faking it. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. All right. So mm -hmm. that would be, yes, we'll put that as an agenda. <coughs> yeah, whatever. Have to vote. I would just say the last meeting of December, we can just, yeah, get to, or, or the first meeting of January, I guess, technically, yeah. you would. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You would have to start the meeting and you know, yep. just have to after town meeting. Exactly. Okay. Mm -hmm. Gives you guys a little bit of time to figure out who, what was that? who may want to do it or not do it. and. Yeah, I think if you're interested in doing it, then you should talk to the other board members and just say, hey, you know, I'm interested in doing it. This is what I, you know, talk amongst yourselves beforehand. All at once? No. no. What, what, what <laughs> because if none that of us... would be legal because it wouldn't be duly warned. What if none of us want to do it? Well, somebody's going to it. defaults back to the town manager, I think. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> no, is it that... No. That would be the moderator and the, and the yeah. chair. Oh, that'd be the, perfect. No, what would happen is and the plow. That you guys would force somebody into it. I'll tell you what they used to do in Bristol is they took turns. Every year the chair was different. Bethel used to do that. Yes, and when I did my exit interview in Bristol, I the chair at the time was Peter Coffey, and I said, please stop doing that. <laughs> and I said, because... If somebody does not want to be chair, you force them into being chair, then it becomes my problem. And, and yeah. if they don't want to do it, there may be a reason. They don't have the time or whatever. <clears throat> it's not making them do that. <laughs> like, if they don't want to, make them vice chair or something and let someone who's willing to do it who has the time or the experience because, you know, sometimes you have some really good chairs and then you just get them for a year. And then you get someone who doesn't want to do it, and they've been forced into doing it because everybody else did it. And then, it doesn't work. you know, no, it's just, you know, it's, <laughs> then again, you know, it's just not fair to them either. Everybody has a skill set, and that, you know, isn't for everybody. So, but what happened is it'd be a motion, and someone would get forced into it. <laughs> well, Finn wouldn't know how to do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Finn will be the new chair. <laughs> He's here all the time. So, yeah, it's something to think about. All right. Anything else to come before the board? It's my Jordan. Do you want to come at 10.30 tonight? Oh, man, that was a late one last mm. night. Tell me about it. <laughs> no, I just... It's a long night. I know. All right. All right. Motion to adjourn. Thanks. Second. All right. Great. Thank you, everybody.